Hi there, and a really warm welcome to this week's quick tip. And this time I mean it. This time we are looking at Expresso, and it's rather simple. So I have this clamp model where I want to rig that so we can open and close it using Expresso and user data. And in the following, we are going to take a look at this very simple setup. So let's get going. All right, let's have a look what we are going to do today. So this time we are going to take this clamp here and people who are following me on Twitter or Instagram already know that from my third hand post. And we are going to make this open and close by this hut element in the display here. But this would be a little bit too simplistic. So what I opted for is a spring inside that moves accordingly. You can see here. Now, this realistic model will be available at the end of this tutorial on my Patreon page. If you're interested in becoming a Patreon, you can head over there and take a look. All right, so let's get started with a fresh scene. So let's close down this one here. And I already prepared a fresh scene where we don't have the spring and the rig enabled. Since this is an Expresso tutorial, let's create an Expresso tag by right-clicking on the clamp, going to Programming Tags and then hit Expresso. And this will open the Expresso window here. For those who are not familiar with Expresso, this is basically a visual programming language, or in other words, you can use the attributes of all objects in Cinema 4D and mix and match them using math and nodes inside of the editor here. But before we start editing, Let's actually model the spring real quick. So if we go back to our scene here, you can see there's no spring inside. So we are going to model this too. So what I'm going to do for a base object for the spring is to create a helix spline. So let's get with a helix spline. And as with all of Cinema 4D tools, it's very big from the startup. So let's get it smaller here by giving it a radius of three or a start radius, a end radius of three, and also a height of three. Here we go. And you notice that I centered the axis around the scene axis here. So you can see from the side, the helix is already centered to the right place. Now, next, what I'm going to do is give this more rotational segments or more rotations as the spring would be very loose. And we want to make the spring a little bit more tight. So let's go to the end angle here and let's change that. And I'm going to change that by going to the angle, setting it to 360 and then typing in times seven. And I tried this before and this is the right amount. Next, what I want to do is to center the spring here a little bit. So I go in a top view or side view so we can see where the center or the alignment of the spring is right now. And we are going to take the axis tool and move it. So you can move it in increments by holding shift, but the increments are a little bit too big right now. So here's a little quick tip. If you press shift M, you can bring up the quantize menu and then type in, for example, 0.25 to make the quantization steps a little bit shorter. And then you can have more control here. So something like that looks good. Here we go, let's go back. Now let's make the top part of the clamp invisible for now. So let's go back to object mode and hit that invisible. What I want to do is get the sides here aligned to the top and bottom part. So what I'm talking about is I want this to end exactly where the, it hits the bottom and this to end exactly where it hits the top. So let's mess around with the start and the end angle here. So for example, for the start angle, we just can put a value of 90 in here, and this will then end at the top. And for the end angle, we just need to take the value that's already in here and type in minus 90, and then this will be ending at the bottom. Next, what I like to do is give the spline a little bit of thickness or make the spring visible. So we are not going to take the sweep nerves here. We are going to take a spline wrap. So let me make a cylinder to use for the spline wrap to wrap around the spline and then go to the cylinder and make the radius 0.2 millimeters. 
the height 100 millimeters and then give the height segments a generous 500 segments as we need to wrap this around the spline and the more segments the more smooth it will be. You can change that to your own liking later. Now with the cylinder selected let's go to the deformers and by holding down shift create a spline wrap and this will be posing the spline wrap inside of the cylinder. Now there's some more things to do. So in the cylinder we want to use the x-axis as this is the preferred axis for the spline wrap. And then also we need to bring the helix inside of the spline wrap so the spline wrap knows what spline it's going to be wrapping around. And here we go, we have our spring. Now let's make this a little bit more pretty by going to the cylinder caps and activate those caps and make them a little bit smaller. So something like that, so they are not as sharp. So by this point you might have asked why I even use a spline wrap and not a sweep knobs here. And the reason is with the spline wrap I am allowed to overshoot the ends and this is what we need for our spring. So let me allow to demonstrate by going to the spline wrap and then go from and let's set this to a negative value. So I noticed that negative 6 is good and as likely the positive 6 on the 100 is good. So we end up with a spring where the two ends are sticking out and this gives us the lever for making the whole clamp work. Okay, before we move on, let's actually clean up this a little bit. Here we go. Before we finally dive into Expresso, let's actually have the HUD element here that we need to drive our whole setup. So we are utilizing user data for that. And the best way to do that is on the topmost object of our rig. So we select the clamp, go to user data and then add user data. Now let me show you what happens if I click OK. Then a new tab appears with the user data. And we have this numeric field with a percentage value from 0 to 100. This is almost what we need, but we can refine that a little bit more. So let's refine that by going to user data and hit manage user data. Here we go. So let's go back to our data and actually rename that. So open close is a much better description for what we are looking for. Then we don't want to only have a numeric field, we want to have a slider. So we go to the interface and click float slider. And you can already see what this is looking like here. Our values are limited from 0 to 100, which is okay. If we wanted to, we could make them overshoot, uh, but we don't want to. So let's hit okay and be good with that. And now we have the slider here. To make a HUD element now, it's as easy as dragging the slider here into the interface. Now, once you have dragged it, it's not draggable anymore. So you need to hold down control to actually be able to drag it. And this is a security precaution to not move HUD elements that you don't want to. What you can see here now is that the name of the object is within that. And also if we deselect our object, the HUD element is gone. Now this might be something you actually want to don't have your interface too cluttered and only show the HUD menus that you actually are using right now. But we want to make this HUD element permanent. So let's go and right click show always and also go to display and tick off the object name. So we are just left with open and close. Very nice. So now it's Expresso time. To get started, let's double click on our Expresso node to open our Expresso window here. And to get started with Expresso, what we need to do is get every object that has to do with our rig inside of the Expresso nodes. So let's drag our clamp in here. Since this is the object where we use our user data, then we need to drag in the spline, the spline wrap, and last but not least, the upper part of our clamp since this is also moving when we open and close it. If you are an advanced user, you already know that by clicking on the blue and red parts of the nodes, you can get access to all the data the object inherits. 
But for us, there is a more easy way. So let's actually get to the clamp, for example, go to user data, and we can just drag and drop this user data onto its node. And then it will be populated here. By the way, you would have found it down on the user data here. And it's now grayed out because it's already populated. By the way, if you cannot read anything, you can either drag the nodes open and closed so it's uh, better readable. If you just want to have the exact size where the node needs to be, you can control double click on the name and that will resize the node to the exact size the text is readable in there. So let's track all node inputs in here that we need. So for our spline, that's basically just the start angle. For our spline wrap, that is the from and to portion here. Here we go. And then control double click to make it expand. And for our object here, that's the angle. So we just drag in the B angle here. Here we go. So all ports are now populated. So now we need to obviously connect those nodes, but we need to connect them in a smart way. To get started with this, let's right click new node expresso general and let's get a result node. This gives us a numeric field that lets us see what the output value of any node we connect to is. So right now it's showing zero and this is because our zero percent here. So if we go and set it to 100%, this is not showing 100, but one. And this is the basic thing in math or in computer science. So our percentage values are a range from zero to one, not a range from zero to 100. What we need to do is remap this to a angle or to anything. So let's start with our object where we need to angle our object here. So let's first figure out what our angles are. So we start with an angle of 15.5, actually that's minus 15.5. And if we move that, we can see that we can get the object to an angle of 9.5 before it then uh, collides with the lower part here. So we now know that we have a variance from minus 15.5 to plus 9.5. And to make this very easy, there is a range mapper node. So let's search for that. And there it is, range mapper. And to make it even more easy, let's define an input and an output number here. So for input, we want to have percentage, so percent, zero to 100 now, and the output range should be defined in decrease. Here we go. So we have now the mapping from 0% to 100% from zero degrees to 360 degrees. So if we connect our percentage into the range mapper and the range mapper into our object, and then move the slider here, you can see now it's doing a full rotation. But we don't want to have a full rotation, we just have to have a uh, value from minus 15.5 to 9.5 here. And this is all it takes to make this work. So for the rest of it, it's just an adaptation of the range mapper. Let's go to the side view and let's look at the spline here. And we can see that we are at a 90 degree angle and not the minus 15.5. So what we actually need to do is go to the spline and adjust that by going in and setting this to plus 15.5. So it is actually having the same angle than the upper part here. So let's duplicate our range mapper here and then do the same thing. So we now know that if we go to the spline, we start at an angle of 105.5. So let's copy that in here. And then we need to find the difference between minus 15.5 and 9.5. Calculated to the rescue, it is actually 25. So 100 and... 5.5 plus 25. Let's see if this works. So if we go to the start angle, that should now be set. And if we move our spline, 
we made a mistake. So actually it's 105.5 minus 25. Here we go. So now that should work. And yes, this is working exceptionally well. Now, last but not least, you might have noticed that the end here is slightly moving. It's creeping because the spline is not round and therefore squeezing it tighter will cause an offset here. So we can fix that. And if you remember correctly, this is the 106 value here. So if we change that, this end is moving. So what we can do here is go ahead and get this duplicated one more time. And instead of an angle, what we want to do is give out a percent value also. So what we need to do here is give out 106 if it's 0% and then 105.9 or something if it's 100%. So let's go and set it to the output 2. And then let's try what we did here. And yes, it's working. Now it's moving in the other direction. So actually, we need to make this value even smaller, maybe 105.95. And now you can see that it's barely moving anymore, and you can have a really nice effect without having the distractions of those side effects. All that's left to do now is tidy up our setup here. Here we go. And then close our Expresso window, go into our perspective view, and then see if everything works out correctly. And yes, we made our spring-loaded clamp here work. Last but not least, what you can do is to disable the viewport visibility of the spline wrap so it doesn't clutter our view. And this is basically it. A very special shout out for my 15 euro tier subscribers for their tremendous support to Laon, Leon Studio TV, Marty Kane, Part 1 of 2, Raiko, Render King, aka Alessandro Bonchio, Scene CGI, Shamos Johnson, and Yasin Rupp. Again, it went a little bit longer than expected, but it's still a short one. So hopefully you enjoyed it and I could give you some insights into Expresso. If you liked that video and the work I do, consider investing in this channel by becoming a Patreon as I like to keep my videos freely available as a small incentive to become a Patreon, you gain access to all my scenes I use in my tutorials, no matter what tier you're subscribed to. If you're interested, you're invited to head over to Patreon, the link is down in the description below. If you want to gain more in-depth knowledge, I also give talks, trainings and seminars on Cinema 4D and Octane related topics such as modeling, texturing, shading, lighting, rendering and compositing. If you are interested, don't hesitate to reach out. And this brings me to my famous last words. If you're still here, thank you very much for staying with me that long. Thank you so much for watching, a great time and happy rigging. Bye.